We went August 26th to December 25th or 6th without rain. A year, year before it all gets to be a bit of a blur, but dry periods, heavy rain periods, getting hundreds of mil of rain inside of a few days, cyclones, gives you a real idea what you need to do and ultimately comes down to infrastructure. And where I started with was hydrology. The first thing we did was ensure that every roof we had had drainage on it and every roof we had was connected back to a tank system one way or fashion. If it was a container, we put drains on it. We needed to get our catchment to the point that we catch as much water as possible. And we went from storing 100,000 liters on farm to over a million in fresh water tanks. And we need every bit of it to handle the amount of food we're processing and washing and take care of folks. We also looked at our dams and we didn't have really good dams. Um, and, and we'll go through it. Our dam was pretty much all silt. 20 odd years of it just running down, had a big old um, beautiful island in the middle of it, bird sanctuary, where they just pretty much dropped manure in our dam all the time. And we detected a massive level of E. coli, 400 times more than what we had in our other dams. And we couldn't leave that in our food production, so we weren't even able to use our dam water for growing. We had to hope for rain. and. We'll go through what we've done to fix that. Because having sat long enough to start to understand this, we need to fix our dams. Our pump stations didn't work right. Our filtration didn't work right. We didn't have water connecting all of our dams. The reason we came to, on this land was because the catchment. The catchment is one of the best catchments in the world. I mean, it's from my perspective. It's beautiful. We actually have the capacity and we have a lot of water moves through our land, but it moves through and it moves off. Because the area below is meant to be a wetland. This is hills, and this water is meant to roll through. So we have to find the balance between catching it and making sure enough water is going through. So we have our dams here, and we've gone through and ensured that our dams are set up where they need to be, right? And then we have what we need to do. So we put 600 meters of swales into these hills. That has allowed us to scrape down through the center here. We went down to more like a rock level in it. And the goal was that a lot of that water will be sinking down into the water table. At this point, after a couple of thousand mils of rain this year, our water table is pretty full. And these which had been draining are actually holding more water. And all the soil that was here has been piled up on the outer edge where we shaped it down into a gentle slope. And after doing all that work, Nick came through and seeded this with our summer cover crop. And now what we've ended up with is an incredible amount of cattle feed. A big issue we've had in the food forest we've inherited has been a, a drainage system of swales which essentially all runs to one point and creates a sort of erosional waterfall down towards a habitated area at the hive, which has been a big problem. So we've actually had a problem to deal with. We need to redirect some of the water that runs through the food forest across the next slope uh, through, through a swale system, which opens up a whole new opportunity for plantings as well. So we sort of, our expansion is sort of partly dealing with the problem that we've inherited by prior earthworks and now opens up this possibility for a whole bunch more uh, new plantings of bigger trees. So essentially it gives us a chance to refine the lessons we've learned in the last three years, choose the species we want to work with more and create a, a much more streamlined system to evolve for the future. All right, so last week we dug these drains into our beds. We've come down, um, ball and contour down between the top of our beds, which has a natural fall off in the direction to where I am now, into our creek down to the right of me. And we've come down 600 mil in here, uh, following the contour. I'm down here in the bed right now, and what we were able to observe, we've had a fair amount of rain over the weekend, and what we're seeing is the groundwater and the water from these beds is already draining. So we've come over and look, 
see how well it's moving in the direction we want to. And as I come along here, I can see the water's moving all the way down this bed, all the way down underneath my feet, and flowing out to the creek off to my right, which is exactly what we want to see happen. And then these, these rows continue, um, and they go down another 80 meters that way, oh, straight in front of me, and then they'll drop through two more drains that we have over there. That's gonna give us the opportunity to allow after big rains or even after rains for these beds to start drain sooner. Instead of being a dry creek bed all through here, it, there's fish that'll be down there, there'll be species that get in here, there's species that end up in here, and this water will come up like it is there and we'll be running through here. And you just start building up and what nature will do is it will collect carbon, right? So all kinds, this is kind of heavy now, dirt will wash out, but what will come in is start collecting biomass in there. In the past couple weeks, we've seen hundreds of millimeters of rain fall on Australia and in the New South Wales area. And what we want to look at is what have we achieved with the earthworks that we've done in the past year and how have they impacted our ability to manage water. All right, so what we have here is a wall that we set up. It's part of our catchment system. So the water's flowing through, coming down. Kai's quite tall and he's standing in about 50, 60 centimeters deep in water. All this is forming a silt trap for us to catch organic matter. As it reaches this higher point, it comes over the rocks, which further catches more organic matter, and then it flows down. And there's a series of this. This is now the third trap that we have coming out of our main dam. As we continue down, off in front of me, there, you'll see the next one ahead, which does roughly the same thing. And then we continue to flow all the way through the farm with dozens of these, each of them, ensuring that we're creating an area to hold water year round in these ponds. At the same time, ensuring that as water moves out of the farm, we capture any organic matter that we can. And we fill this, as you can see, with all these grasses and plants. These grasses and plants are taking up these minerals, moving them into the grasses, and that will either get consumed by our cattle when they're in here, or it's something that we can remove out and put into our compost system. What's important to see here is how critical these grasses are. And by having grasses along this, even though all this water is moving, it's at a gentle slope. It's not coming quickly. It's actually at a slow drop rate. And these grasses are gonna hold this perfectly fine they're actually collecting nutrients as it flows through. That ultimately will allow these grasses to thrive. This is our spillway area and it's so important your spillways have organic matter growing on them. Now we can see where our pipe's coming out here and we can see where it's coming over the spillway. Now we'll take a look at the dam and see how the dam is. It is the end of our series of dams. Further up we this hillside over here. We have a series of dams that all flow down in here and we'll work our way back up through the catchment. But you can see this dam has reached its peak. We have the pipes in front of us here. These pipes are allowing water to flow out of the dam. Um, about four meters, three and a half meters down in this dam. We have other pipes that are our valves that we can open up to drain the dam. Everything's wide open. Yet the water is still coming over our spillway. What's so important is that you keep your spillways clean. In this case, we've uh, cut away the grass to ensure, because these grasses will hold back 50 centimeters of water or more and slow down how the water comes out of the dam.